Hey y'all, welcome back to Movement Link. So I just wanna share a conversation that we had in the gym. I like to do this every now and then of kind of step out of the pure training and start sharing with y'all some of the conversations that happened in between classes and some of the conversations we had to help per per put perspective on what we're doing in the gym. Uh, so every Memorial Day, sometimes we'll do it on the 4th of July, just kind of depends what go is going on. But most of these big American holidays, we like to use them as an opportunity to pay tribute to some war heroes. This particular workout is called Murph. It's four time, it's a mile run. You do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, a mile run. It's all for time. If you're very advanced, you might do this with a weight vest on, and we scale it either without the vest, we mix and match how you do these reps. Some people just do it a mile with the vest, 100 pull-ups, and then after they're done with 100, they move on to the push-ups and some mix and match. So how you do it doesn't really matter. The intent is of this one is to have a really high volume kind of grueling uh, workout that really makes us grind through and as a way just to kind of pay tribute to the heroes uh, in our lives. So here's the deal. The conversation that typically comes up is a lot of people like to use Murph as a benchmark workout. A lot of times these hero workouts, other CrossFit style type workouts, people like to use them as benchmarks. And then we just like to point out why it might be a good idea, why it might not be a good idea, and how we can kind of make the priority of the workout in line with really the goals of training. So uh, let's get into this. So for Murph, let's imagine this. Let's imagine you write your score down, okay? We'll, we'll assume you do everything the same way. We're gonna wear the vest, we'll just do it exactly how it's written. You're gonna run the mile, you're gonna do 100 pull-ups, you're gonna do 200 push-ups, 300 squats, you're gonna run the mile. Okay, you can get it done, we can write your time, there's your time. So on the surface, this seems like a good idea. We can compare your time year after year after year after year to see are you getting fitter, but really we're looking at are you getting better at the Murph workout. So. To be able to do this, we have to be able to compare the pull-ups you did today with the type of pull-up you're doing the next year and the next year and the next year, same with push-ups, same with air squats. So to do that, and what happens in competitions, is we need to get it, uh, uh, rules in place so we can make it even across everybody. So we come up with rules. With pull-ups, at the bottom, your arm has to be fully extended, and at the top, you gotta get your chin above the horizontal plane. Usually kipping pull-ups are allowed in Murph as long as it's arms extended, chin over the bar. Push-ups as long as chest and thighs touch the ground and arms are locked out at the top. We're gonna count that as a push-up. Air squats as long as you stand all the way up straight and squat with your hips going below the knee crease. We're gonna count that. Running is running as long as you go a mile, it counts. So as long as we're hitting those standards, we're gonna have something that we can compare year after year after year. We do have a slight problem. If you don't have a judge every single year, you can kind of get a little bit of tripped up on are those actual reps? Are you truly doing the full range of motion or are you accidentally not? But even beyond that, let's just go ahead and assume you are doing the full range of motion and it's up to competitive standards. The priorities still are not completely in line. So, if I am doing 200 push-ups for training, meaning I'm gonna do 200 push-ups in this workout and my ultimate goal is to put the right stimulus and stress on my body, to challenge my technique, and for me to develop holding myself to this higher technique standard under stress, that way in the future, my body is gonna develop better and in the future, I'm gonna be more inclined to be able to use that technique under stress. That's gonna be training. Okay, so if I'm holding myself to that standard as I'm on push-up 103 out of 200, if my elbows start to go out, if my shoulders start to shrug a little bit, I take a step back, I shake it out, and I'm only going as fast as I can perfectly. But if I only have the standard of chest and thighs on the ground, lock the arms out, then as I fatigue, maybe I let my shoulders go and my elbows go. Maybe I play around with different hand placements. That way I can use more chest, use more tricep as I adjust hand placements. Instead of trying to pick the best hand placement that has the most carryover into everything and using that hand placement for the duration. 
So we can start seeing that as soon as we put a score on something, if we're not choosing the exercises correctly, sometimes the priorities get out of whack. Another thing I can do on push-ups is if I let my spine round and flex at just the right times, I can manipulate where my body weight is so I don't actually have to displace my body weight as far as I'm doing my presses, meaning I don't have to press weight as far. It's a huge advantage. If I drop to the ground really fast, I can actually bounce off of the ground with my chest and that makes me not have to use as much muscle down at the bottom as I get a free turnaround and get to press out. So there's a lot of ways that I can do push-ups within a competition standard. Maybe I can start turning my hands out a little bit to help get that shoulder externally rotated when I'm fatigued. The reason that that's not a great idea is that with the barbell, you don't have that choice. You have to be able to create that torque and you need to be able to create it after you've done a ton of reps and you're tired and fatigued. We need to get really good at creating that torque yourself. So we can see that because we chose push-ups and now we're testing, when we have our uh, competition standards of chest, thighs on the ground, locked all the way out, there's a lot of variation within that that I can do. And a lot of that variation is gonna be, some of it can make me go a lot faster, some of that can make the training have a much higher benefit, but they're not the same thing. So now let's take a look at the run. We've got a mile run. You can skip, you can crawl, you can jump, you can run backwards, you can do whatever you want on this run, you have to go a mile. What I can tell you with certainty is that if you take two of the exact same people, same fitness, same person, same everything about them, same mindset, same ability to grind, same pacing strategies, everything, and you give one person better running technique, that person is gonna be more efficient in the run. If you take two people, exact same everything I talked about, and one person has way better push-up technique, but then you give them competition standards, it's no longer who has the best technique is gonna be the most efficient, it's who's finding the best loopholes and the best ways to vary how they're doing it to get them through the task. So here's the key and here's what we want people thinking and taking the extra step to do, is that when we are truly testing, we wanna choose exercises in a way where they're not actual exercises. We wanna choose tasks that mimic the real world, okay? Running mimics the real world. If you hop on a rower, you can pull the handle over your head, you can row with one leg, you can round your back, you can pull like this, you can do all sorts of things, but what we know, you take equal people, you give equal people, one of them better technique, the person with better technique is gonna do better on the rower, period. There's a lot of things we can do. A push-up doesn't exist out in the real world. If you're playing football or volleyball or you dove for a ball in baseball and you do a strict push-up to get up off the ground, you're probably missing the point of what we're trying to do. You would end up doing a style of a kipping push-up that has the arch and snap that we talk about a lot on this channel, make something that looks like a burpee, and now we have something that's a little more functional. So now if we're testing, Instead of testing push-ups, maybe we test something like a burpee where you get all the way onto the ground, you get back up off the ground, and usually in a burpee we do a jump and clap, but that has a lot of subjectiveness to it. Is that a word, subjectiveness? We'll see. Anyway, a lot of people end up doing half-assed things. So then what if we add a step up or jump up on and over a box? Now it's very, very clear. Did you get on the ground? Did you get over the box? I don't care how you do it. I actually do care how you do it, but it doesn't matter how you do it. If you get on the ground and you get up and over the box, it's a rep. And here's what we know. You take two people equal of everything. The person with the best arch and snap technique out of the burpee is going to be able to do their burpee, get up over the box easier. There's no subjectiveness that did that task get done. Instead of pull-ups, we have a rope. Climb up the rope. Did you get up the rope? Yes or no? There is no... Did you extend? Did you go up? The best rope climb technique is gonna be the best technique. So here's what I wanna challenge you to do, especially if you are a programmer writing workouts for people. What I want you to consider is in my opinion, Murph is an amazingly good workout. It is a great 
training workout, but people need to go into Murph with the right mindset of doing their pull-ups, doing their push-ups, doing their air squats, not to competition standards, doing their pull-ups, push-ups, air squats in a way that's going to maximally benefit them in their training for longevity, for building the, as much strength, endurance, flexibility, range of motion, all these things as possible. Put a little asterisk by this. If you're a competitive CrossFitter and your sport is CrossFit, you're gonna have to compete in these things. You're gonna have to learn all of these loopholes and then you have to be smart and balance how often are you training to push yourself forward and how often are you developing your loopholes within these exercises to maximize your capabilities in a competition setting. Very different than if you're like me who uses CrossFit style things to develop for real world things. Those are two completely different things. So what I wanna challenge you to do is really look at the intent of these workouts. And instead of saying for time, let's say something for like for in intensity and technique. Cleverly, how I like to write workouts is fit. So I don't do Murph for time, because if I'm doing it for time, my priorities are out of line. If I'm doing it for time, and you give me the standards, I'm gonna find every single loophole I can, because I know you're gonna write my time on the board, and everybody in the gym, all they're gonna see is my time. They're not gonna know how I did it. I'm gonna make sure I do it to competition standards, but I wanna get the best time possible. If instead you tell me, let's do Murph for intensity and technique, meaning, a push-up only matters if your butt cheeks are squeezed and your back stays still and you create that external torque in the shoulder and you have the stable shoulder position and full range of motion. We only care about those reps. Murph looks very different than it's just chest, thighs on the ground, lock it out. Very, very different uh, uh, standards push you to very, very different results. We need to spend about 80% of our time training. We need to spend about 20% of our time testing our training. But if we test our training with the exercises we use in training, we're not testing if our training is getting us real world results. We're testing if our training is improving our training. And I can almost guarantee you, no matter what style of training you do, your training is going to improve your ability to train. It's does your training actually transfer to the things you want to do in your life? So take a minute, think about why you're working out. What is the big picture? Do you want to go on hikes? What sports do you want to play? What do you want to do? It's about health, it's about feeling good. And we need our tests to mimic that. And when our tests are the exercises we use in training, we're not testing the effectiveness of our workouts to transfer into the results you're looking for. We're testing the effectiveness, effectiveness of your workouts to make you be able to work out better. Very similar, but different, and I think in a, in a very profound way. So as you're coming up with your testing workouts about once a week, your testing workouts, try and make them, you gotta be really clever on this stuff, but try and make them more task-oriented and not exercise-oriented, that way, you can actually have a data point that you can compare time and time and time and time again. If you change how you do push-ups and your time increases, I'm not positive that you've actually gotten fitter. You might have just found a better loophole in the push-ups. But instead, if you change your running and your run gets better, I am very confident that you've got fitter or your running technique is improved. Food for thought. Hope that helps. Talk to y'all soon.